a wonder hussy here live from my coronavirus quarantine headquarters how's everybody doing how's your quarantine going depending on where you are this is somewhere around day 543 of the quarantine and if you're anything like me you're probably getting a little bit stir crazy <laughs> I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I know I'm really lucky as far as where I'm quarantined. I'm out here in the beautiful desert. Got private hot springs to soak in. I've got plenty of places to go hiking, biking, metal detecting. You know, I got plenty of hobbies to keep me busy. But gosh, as lucky as I am, I still get bummed out sometimes. And well, Today is kind of one of those times. I know, I know, being asked to stay at home is hardly a huge sacrifice to make, especially when you consider, well, I saw a meme online that was comparing the sacrifices people were required to make during World War II <laughs> compared to what we're being asked to do today, and oh God, there's no comparison. We're really lucky and, you know, complaining about it just really feels like whining. But at the same time, I know a lot of people are really suffering during this because, well, people get lonely, you know? Like, that's the hardest part for me is being cut off from all my friends and family. You know, isolation can be a serious thing. I mean, fortunately, you know, I'm here with Barry, the Australian beast for company, so I'm not completely alone. But, you know, there are a lot of people who are alone and that's a serious concern. So if you are having to sit through this quarantine alone, you know, you live alone, you're cooped up alone, Listen, I feel for you. I'm here for you. And gosh, hopefully we'll get through this and we'll be out together again soon. But that being said, I just, I don't know, kind of woke up today with a case of the gloomies. Um, part of it is just, you know, being up, feeling isolated, missing my family. It was my brother's birthday yesterday and well, we had an online virtual birthday party for him, which was nice. It was cool to see everyone, but you know, it wasn't quite the same. And then two, today happens to be the anniversary of my dad's death. I know I've talked about this in other videos, so I'm not going to go into the whole story again, but my dad committed suicide by, by stepping in front of a train on this day in 2011. So, well, that was kind of in the back of my mind too, I guess. Like, oh, I miss my dad. I'm sorry what happened to him. So it's kind of a, I guess, just a bummer of a day all around. And then one other thing that's bumming me out is, well, I recently uh, hit 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which is an awesome milestone and it's very exciting. Uh, you know, I've been working towards that for a long time. So when I finally hit uh, at the beginning of April, man, I was so excited. You know, it really feels like validation. And I guess, uh, well, what's even more exciting is YouTube sends, when, you, when your channel uh, hits 100,000 subscribers, YouTube sends you a sort of, a congratulatory trophy. You might have seen this on other YouTubers' channels. Uh, it's a giant play button, like the YouTube logo, the play button. Well, when I think when you hit 100,000 subscribers, YouTube sends you like a big trophy version of the play button, a silver play button. And then when you hit, I think, 5, 500,000, they send you like a gold one and a million, you get a diamond one. I'm not sure exactly the order it goes in, but for 100K, you're supposed to get a silver play button. And I know I've seen it on other YouTubers' channels where they'll have it up on the shelf behind them, you know, just sort of showing it off. So I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I was really looking forward to getting that play button for my own shelf in my office back at my house. But unfortunately, I'm not so sure I'm going to get a play button. See, when I first hit 100K, I was curious, you know, I thought, well, I wonder if they're gonna send me a play button even with all this coronavirus stuff going on. So I went online and Googled it just to see what the uh, protocol was. And well, apparently it's up to YouTube's discretion as to which channels they award play buttons to. And they'll only award a play button to a channel in good standing. And Lord knows, it's not like I post anything controversial on my channel, it's just videos of me bumbling around in the middle of nowhere. But unfortunately for me, I have a proclivity for, uh, well, running around naked, especially when it comes to natural hot springs. I don't know. I just don't like wearing a swimsuit. I like to skinny dip. And 
in some of my earlier YouTube videos, I guess I showed a little bit too much nudity. You know, I've really taken pains to not show any nudity or do anything that would violate YouTube's terms of service. I take it very seriously. And in YouTube's defense, they're actually pretty fair, or they have been pretty fair in my experience when it comes to violations. Uh, earlier on when I started my channel back in, well, I really started my channel seriously in 2016. And back then I would kind of upload just anything. I, I didn't really take it too seriously. Uh, and so I, every now and then I would get like a, a warning that my video was inappropriate or whatever. And usually it was because, you know, I'd put like a very brief glimpse of butt nudity. You know, I, that's, I kind of use Instagram standard as my standard on Instagram. You're allowed to show your butt as long as it's not, you know, up close and personal. So I figured, okay, well, if it's okay for Instagram, it should be okay for YouTube. And YouTube says that nudity is allowed as long as it's not in a sexual fashion. So uh, with my previous run-ins, when they would let me know that something was inappropriate, I would either just take the video down or I would mark it as 18 plus or whatever, it would all work out. Well, apparently there was this one video I made way back in, I think 2016, where I went to Arizona Hot Springs and well, somebody had just given me a, a GoPro with an underwater housing so you could shoot underwater footage. And I thought it'd be cool to shoot some footage of my bare butt underwater. And it couldn't have been more than, God, maybe five, ten seconds of footage. But it was enough for, you know, four years later. The video was up for four years and they didn't complain about it until four years ago. Well, actually, I think they did give it a yellow light. They said it wasn't suitable for all advertisers, but it didn't violate their standards for four years. Then all of a sudden they changed their mind four years later. Earlier this year, I think, I got a notification from them saying it violates their community standards and now my channel has a strike on it. And uh, fast forward to now when I'm supposed to get this play button, well, apparently if a channel has a strike against it, then it's not in good standing and they reserve the right to not award a play button. So I'm pretty sure I'm not getting a play button from YouTube. Okay, so I'm bummed because I'm lonely I'm bummed because my dad stepped in front of a train, and I'm bummed because I didn't get a play button. <laughs> Sounds like a country music song or a bad case of first world problems. <laughs> you know, I used to get depressed a lot more than I do now. Uh, I guess I, well, I was kind of a melancholy person for a long time, but I don't know. I haven't had that problem for the last gosh, five, ten years? I think it's because I keep so busy and now I have, you know, I really enjoy making videos so much that, gosh, I haven't been depressed at all. But every now and then I do kind of get in a funk. You know, we all do, or most of us do. And so, well, what I usually find helpful when I'm in a funk is <laughs> I try to think of five good things. Either five good things that just happened to me or five good things that are about to happen to me. So, hmm. Maybe I ought to play that game right now. Okay, number one thing that I have to be cheerful for is, well, actually, it sounds like this virus thing might actually finally be winding down. I saw some pretty encouraging news reports about Nevada anyways, that the number of deaths is much lower than they expected. And the overall death rate is actually much lower than they were reporting because come to find out there's a lot of people who weren't able to get tested that actually had it but we're just asymptomatic. So basically what it all boils down to is the virus, while it's still a terrible thing and people are dying from it, it's nowhere near the apocalyptic disaster that they were predicting. So while I know Las Vegas isn't gonna recover anytime soon, because even if they reopen all the casinos, I don't think people are gonna feel comfortable going back to that environment for a long time. So unfortunately my friends in Vegas that work in that industry are not out of the woods yet, but you know, for me, for my purposes, it'll be a good thing because, well, they'll finally ease up on these travel restrictions and I won't be trapped here anymore. And that means I can finally get back to the business of going on adventures with other people. <laughs> my last several adventures have been solo because I didn't want to risk infecting someone or getting infected myself. But, you know, once this virus thing is done, uh, I can finally go do stuff like, well, I've been really wanting to uh, hike back up to that plane crash on Mount Potosi with Larry. If you've been watching my channel for a while, Larry and I last fall tried to hike to this uh, plane crash on Mount Potosi where the actress Carol Lombard died. It's a really famous plane crash site and it's really hard to get to. And unfortunately, Larry and I weren't able to get to the actual plane crash because like, we ran out of daylight and Larry hurt his ankle and well, 
we had to hike back down and call it off and it's been bothering me ever since. I really want to get back up there, especially because I found out that supposedly some other YouTuber lost a drone up there that he's offering a $500 reward for, for the memory card that's in the drone. So I'm looking forward to doing that hike again. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna find Carol Lombard's wedding ring or anything, but hey, I might find that drone. And even if I don't, gosh, it'll just be nice to, you know, I hate to leave a job unfinished. It'll just be nice to get up there and get to that dang plane crash. And then speaking of hiking, uh, I, one of my fans recently just emailed me. He sent me a pair of really nice hiking shoes. They're not boots. They're just kind of like hiking tennis shoes. So uh, I have to go back into Vegas at some point next week to um, sign my taxes. I did my taxes. Uh, I left them with my accountant or I mailed them to my account, but I have to go sign them in person. So I have to go back into Vegas and then I'll use that chance to check my mail and get those hiking shoes. And then, well, I mean, if they friggin' reopen Death Valley, I have this awesome hike planned out. That's going to be the perfect way to break those shoes in. Um, I read about this cabin, this ultra, ultra, ultra remote cabin, way, way out in the, the super remote part of Death Valley that has uh, since become wilderness. So you're not allowed to drive out there anymore. So you have to hike four miles from the closest place you can drive to get to this cabin. And <laughs> well, you know me, I love my cabins. I love stuff that's hard to get to and I love making videos all about it. So that's a hike that I'm really excited to do. And well, hopefully they reopen the park before too long because it's about to bit, get too hot to hike in Death Valley. Okay, so I'm looking forward to the virus thing being over, hiking to the plane crash with Larry, hiking to this cabin in Death Valley in my new shoes. Number four, the fourth thing I guess I'm happy about is, well, actually this is gonna sound weird, but uh, the Burning Man Festival. Um, it's this big festival up in Northern Nevada every year that I've been going to for the last 10 years. <laughs> And I really enjoy it. I have a lot of fun up there with my friends and all the crazy stuff that goes on. You can Google it. It's, it's a nutty, nutty festival. It's amazing. But, you know, gosh, I've gone to it for 10 years in a row. So when they recently announced that they canceled it this year because of the virus, well, I actually wasn't disappointed. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it does sound like a safety hazard to have 80,000 hippies all clustered up on a dry lake bed, you know, sharing food, sharing drinks, passing joints, you know, snuggling up together in lice-infested cuddle puddles. Doesn't really sound like the best kind of festival to have right after a pandemic. But more to the point, I was just relieved that they canceled it because it means I don't have to go. I mean, I feel like for the past few years, I've been going to Burning Man not because I wanted to go to Burning Man, so much as because I didn't want to not go to Burning Man, if that makes any sense. I just didn't want to miss out on it because it's a lot of friggin' work. To, you gotta pack up all the gear, bring all your food, bring all your water, you know, put new t tires on the trailer, repack the bearings on the trailer, tow the dang trailer all the way up there, set everything up, run around party all week, beat yourself up, and then pack everything back up, tow your trailer back home, put everything away. It's exhausting and it's expensive. And well, frankly, I'm kind of relieved that it was canceled. And moreover, because it's canceled, now I have the whole summer free. And I'm, well, depending on how this virus thing plays out, I might be going to Australia with Barry, because Barry's from Australia. And he told me about this trip he took out there once where they, they took like a RV all around the, the whole country, around the outback, just camping here, camping there, going to beaches and crazy deserts and, can you imagine? That would be an epic adventure. So again, fingers crossed, depending on how this virus situation plays out, I may be going down under. Okay, so that's number four thing that I'm happy about. I need one more thing. And normally I have so many events to look forward to, like, oh, well, I'm going to Ballarat for Freedom Days next week, or I've got this festival coming up in two weeks, or I'm going to meet up with that person. Well, I don't have anything on my calendar because everything's on hold. So it's kind of hard to come up with things to look forward to, but I can, I can think of one, I can think of one thing to look forward to. I guess tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, um, well, you can see we're kind of out here in the country. It's a desert, but it's pretty remote, uh, rural, not a lot of development. And there's this, well, you might not be able to tell, but there's this big sort of marshy wash that runs right alongside Barry's house. And it's full of wildlife. Uh, early mornings, you see coyotes come cruising through. And then uh, you see little bunny, beautiful little bunny rabbits, birds. 
Um, I guess there's even little desert foxes out here. I've actually never seen one of those, but Barry said he has. But there's these adorable little cottontail rabbits that run all over his property, actually. Like some of them live in the wash and a lot of them actually live in the palm trees around that blue trailer. That's Barry's old house. Uh, and he doesn't trim the palm trees on purpose because he likes to create a wildlife habitat for the birds and the bunnies. Or there's a ton of these adorable little bunnies. And they're so cute. They'll come up like he throws a lot of bird seed and carrots and stuff out for them. So they'll come up and eat them, but they won't get too close to you. But they will kind of come surprisingly close. And apparently, I didn't wake up very early this morning because I was kind of in a funk. I just want to stay in bed. But apparently at 7 a.m., Barry was out early this morning. And one of those little bunnies let him pet it. And I'll be honest, I didn't believe him when he told me that. Cause I'm like, it's a wild bunny rabbit. Why would it let some human touch it? But he swore up and down. Yeah, he just bent over and like scratched it between the ears and it was cool. And then he said he thought about trying to pick it up and bring it in the house to show me, but it got scared and ran off, which who can blame it. So I don't know if that's true or not. I'm still a little bit skeptical. Barry is good with animals though. He's an animal nut. So who, who knows? Maybe it is true. Anyway, if I can, well, if I can get my sorry ass out of bed early enough tomorrow morning, well, maybe I'll be able to see Barry pet a bunny and maybe I'll be lucky enough to pet a bunny too. Hmm? You know, remember when I went to, uh, if you watched my video, when I went to Havasu Falls down in Arizona, backpacking and camping, the, those horses left their little baby foal <laughs> with me and my sisters for like an hour. They ba we basically babysat these horses' baby foal and we were able to hug it and take pictures with it and everything. Well, that was pretty unbelievable and unusual. So if I was able to hang out with a baby foal for an hour, I don't see why I shouldn't at least be able to pet a little bunny rabbit. Huh. Well, actually, <laughs> as corny and uh, hokey as it is, I actually do feel a lot better now than when I start making this video. <laughs> Just talking about all these stupid things that make me happy. Even if it is something as stupid as petting a rabbit, you know? Hey, it made me smile. And, well, hopefully you guys have something going on in your lives that makes you smile too. And golly, hopefully this virus thing is over sooner than later because I am going stir crazy. I'll be honest, I did, I don't know if you can see my rig down there. Well, you can't see it, but there's mud on the sides. I did sneak out last week for a little quick trip. Uh, video coming soon. But man, I'm hunkering to go for like a real trip. I want to drive around, like leave the state, like go someplace. So <sighs> I can't wait. But until then, I do have plenty of videos still in the can. So stay tuned and I'll see you next Wednesday.